the weight of the world on my back made me slip right through the cracks it caused this in reaction now i escape to a world filled with you of this love that is blue we see through all the destruction maybe i should join the cult at least they'll tell me it's not my fault that the world
Okay. Gotta prepare the stabilizers first. Probably the most annoying parts outside of looping switches. But also the most important parts. Because if your stabilizers sound bad, the entire board will just feel off. A bit unlucky. Trying out to uh, put this medical tape. Just normal fabric tape. I will try to put that on those little bars on each end, so the fitment is a bit tighter and we don't have enough, we have too much wiggle room. It's always a bit of a pain. Yeah, it's already coming off a lot. I've done it like weeks ago. But usually uh, I'm a heavy nail eater when I'm under stress and it just helps not eating my nails too much if it's fresh, like if it's to the top of my fingernail. Now not so much, but yeah. I mean for me it's always in phases, but yeah it's a... Uh, Really bad habits. Okay. Let's just try to eye it for now. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's most important part is that the part of the wire that actually touches the plastic housing is covered. Anything else is uh, not that relevant. It's been a really long time since I've last done this. The last time I tried it, the medical tape wasn't sticking really well. But usually it sticks good enough. It's actually not too hard. It's a learning curve. I agree. I was struggling a lot at the beginning. But if you have somewhat okay typing habits, which I probably don't have, but get the idea. If you have okay typing habits, it's quite easy to use for typing. Surprisingly. Like things like the Y. I used to always press with my left hand and you cannot do this with this keyboard because you have to reach over way too far. 
Or maybe sometimes you t press the G with your left, uh, with your right hand. Also can't really do that here. So those little things uh, need adjustment. But outside of that, it's quite a joy to type on. Things just kind of fall into place. It strains your hands a lot less. Things like that. I'm also building a keyboard with the same layout today. An LS layout. So an LS layout is basically a 65% keyboard as an ergonomic split keyboard. Like you can see here. There's also a Risu layout. Those are 60% keyboards in the split layout. I'm not entirely sure how they came to those names, but I think it has to do with a keyboard name. Like it used to be, there used to be a keyboard called Alice and there used to be a keyboard called Arisu, who kind of started that trend in the custom keyboards world. And people started calling the layouts like the keyboard name. Uh, yeah, I play well with that. The last two raids, like on Wednesday and Thursday, I played both of those on this keyboard. Like I said, it's not that bad. Like I think MMOs where you have like your fingers on WASD, thumb on the small shift and small finger on your big shift, thumb on the spacebar, it falls into place quite well. I think uh, for things like leak, I struggle a bit more because my hand feels a bit more cramped here because of that. A normal keyboard would be a bit more relaxing. Like you can, I can open my hand a bit further. With this one, you know, I have to like claw a bit more for things like leak. But it's still fine. The biggest issue I have this this board specifically is that uh, the key cap uh, profile is a bit taller than normal cherry keycaps. It's Echo's own sort of SA but not quite SA profile, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but also this keyboard has, this one, has only no facing switches, so I cannot just swap keycaps because I would get interference with uh, cherry keycaps. Meaning the keycap when I press down would start touching the top of the switch, making an unpleasant feeling, like a really harsh bottom out and also an unpleasant sound. So I would need to change the switches in this to something with a long pole. Since long pole switches remove the issue of having uh, interference. Since they bottom out earlier, you gain some millimeters, so the uh, keycap doesn't touch the. Come on. The keycap doesn't touch the top of the switch. I hate the last bit of the fabric tape, it never comes off clean. Scissors like this. Hmm. Like I'm still not perfect with typing on this. But I think it's a good way to force yourself into better habits. Easiest way to learn something is to just throw yourself into it and see how you deal with it. At least in my opinion. Nothing different here. I just bought this one because I wanted a cheaper LS layout keyboard. 
to play around with. Because generally I like the look of it as well. I like the look of LS keyboards. I like the look of split keyboards. I like the look of ergonomic keyboards. They just look a bit different. Uh, it doesn't stick well. So this is the keyboard I just play around with a bit. Currently I have some linear JWIX in this one. Just stock, not looped by me. They are pre-looped from factory, actually quite well, surprisingly. Like uh, Usually factory pre-looping is quite bad. Or at least not good, call it that. But those are surprisingly good. Okay. But they are normal length pole stems. So that's why I didn't swap keycaps yet on this one. But the board itself is also a great value. I think it's called like some something like Echo LS Pro, something weird like that, but it comes with a big silicon sheet below, like in the case. The case is CNC uh, ABS, I believe, but it's a bit higher quality plastic. It also comes with, I mean, the current keycaps I have on there are the blue ones, like with the blue legends, but it also comes with black legends in the box. Uh, yeah, should be alright. Cut it off a bit too long. And it also comes with a little bit of tape. So you can tape mod your keyboard without having to buy painter tape or something. Tape mod is if when you uh, put painter's tape usually below your like on the bottom of your PCB. It helps with resonating the sound and uh, change the sound structure of your keyboard very easily and very cheap. They actually put their own tape in there with like a little print and already perfectly fitting to the weird uh, PCB size of Alice boards. It's a really nice touch. It makes the keyboard usually sound a bit more uh, marbly, poppy. You might call it that. Uh... Yeah, renovating is very expensive, at least from my experience. Expensive and also time consuming. I've noticed that when I moved into this apartment here. My old apartment was already full of furniture when I moved into it. So I didn't own anything of it. So when I moved out of it, I had no furniture for the new one. I had to buy a lot, build a lot, and I still miss some things. I mean, yeah, but I just have to rent a bigger car, but just ask my family to help me. My father owns a very big car, but it's not the biggest issue. This time I was able to move it all with my small car, but uh, the next time I move, which is hopefully not soon, but you never know, I will have to ask my parents and friends for assistance. Yeah, like you can't see it, but to this side I have a very big uh, closet, which covers an entire corner and around. 
that would be very painful to move, I think. And also in my uh, bedroom, I have another very tall and big closet. Uh, I mean, making your own little office space sounds like a great idea. I did the same here. I mean, it's an office and gaming space, but I'm also working from home, so... Well, now it's both. I used to have my computer and office space in my old apartment, because my old apartment was really small. It was uh, right next to my bed. It didn't really have any living room or whatever, it was all one room. So if you work for three years from home, eventually the space will feel very cramped. I have to cut this off a bit further. Okay. Perfect. Ooh, moving company. That sounds a bit stressful. If I'm being honest. I mean, you probably also have like a tighter schedule, no? Since people that move have a certain kind of idea when everything is supposed to be there. I can also imagine it being tough on your body, yeah. I cut this off way too short, I think. Yeah, we're doing this one. I could also imagine that most people that hire moving companies have very difficult things to move usually. Because if it were easy, they wouldn't have fired you in the first place. If that thought process makes sense. Like they basically only uh, bought the service because they didn't want to do whatever they had to move. Yeah, that's a lot better. Like. I don't think I could, no, I, if without, on, uh, without removing and completely disassembling my bed, I couldn't even move it down. And if I were to disassemble my bed, I, it would be easy enough to carry on my own. Already on the last one with the tape. Sofa, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, my sofa can be disassembled into three pieces, but they are still heavy. Like, I wouldn't want to carry those on my own downstairs. Mainly, they're not only heavy, but they're also like just a bit too big for one person to carry easily. But the people that uh, brought my sofa here, when I bought it, 
They carried it up below. The three pieces. But it looked like a struggle. Not gonna lie. Mm. Last piece. I mean, yeah, but in the end, if you think about it, it's the same in the end for your body. If you move heavy furniture or if you move j weights, your body doesn't care what you move. It's still training nonetheless, at least in my eyes. I try to think more like that in my general normal life. Like, yeah, it's a pain. But it's also good for me. You know? Makes certain things, at least for me, a lot easier to do. I mean, yeah, the movements, etc. will be different. When you move lifts, uh, if you lift weights in the gym, you go for specific movements that will hit muscles better or differently. But in the end, moving furniture will still make you stronger. It's not like it has zero effect on your body. Like I'm even considering going outside for a walk, not running, just walking. I consider that already a workout. Just that kind of mindset. Every little thing counts. Whatever you can do to make it easier, in my opinion, a good thing. Yeah, but if you can't grip things well, it will increase your grip, grip strength the next time. If you think about it. Like you can grip something very awkwardly, so you have a hard time holding it, it will increase your grip strength. Because you probably go to failure. Yeah, I, the only thing I did in the gym for cardio was uh, the bicycle, like those little home trainer thingies. Uh, I only did that when I was doing cardio in the gym. It was a phase where I woke up at like 6.30 before work, because I usually start working at around 9am. So I went and got up at like 6.30, 7 and went for like one hour of cardio in the morning. It sucked at the beginning, getting up so early, relatively speaking, like for me early. And then doing cardio. But eventually it actually became quite nice. I don't know. In general, just moving and doing something for your body puts you in a really nice headspace. At least for me that's the case. And ever since I moved, I used to live in the city center of a, a bigger city in Bavaria. I'm living now a bit outside of the city. It's still in the city, but like in the outskirts. So it feels a lot nicer to just go out for a walk. I have some uh, fields close to me, a little river. Just a lot more enjoyable to go outside. Yeah, the first two or three weeks you have to really force yourself at times to push through. And once you get into the rhythm, it just becomes natural to do it. 
currently I'm I need I'm going back into the rhythm. Like going outside for walks is already like an impulse I have at times, which is nice. But I also need to start working out again more. Ever since uh, I got COVID last year, uh, I really got out of the rhythm and never got really back into it. Like I've started working out last year, February, I believe, actively working out multiple times a week with some sort of plan, but I've got COVID in July, mid-July last year, and I've lost around 60% or 50 to 60% of my lung capacity that time. And I was recovering for roughly two, three months from that. You can't really work out if your lung capacity is that shit. You will be completely destroyed after one set. I've tried it. And I also had a very nasty cough all the time. Like I was permanently coughing. I actually had to take uh, an inhaler like people that have asthma multiple times a day. Mm. Should be right. And when I moved, other things in my life changed. So never really came back to working out more regularly. Okay. Let's start with the steps now. Actually lubing them. <laughs> Not what I would know. Can you really consider cardio if it only lasts a few minutes? Asking for a friend. Of course. Only what I heard. Since when do I get that fisk? Did I... Did I miss the memo? <laughs> Going multiple times, you're crazy. That's a true workout then. Double hole needs to go to the front. It's been so long since I've done stabilizers, or in general since I've uh, modded and built a keyboard again. I was actually running a bit low on money since the last build. Back then I was still uh, in my apprenticeship at work, but I didn't get full payment. That changed since last year. Actually, not even last year, the year prior. But things are still expensive. Like, I don't even know how much the board was that I bought when I bought it, that I'm building today. But I'm sure it was not cheap. So I can't really do those kind of builds on like a regular basis, even though I would like to. It's very therapeutic just uh, sitting down and doing this for a couple of hours. Talking to people maybe a bit that are also interested in it. Or just listening to music. I mean... 
люди. I mean, when I was still a student, I don't mind openly talking about that. My paycheck was before taxes around 1.3k at the end as a student but it was a bit special because while studying I was also working for the company so the company paid for my university and I was working for them in the meantime and they were also giving me an apprenticeship at the same time in Germany you usually have the choice between going to university after school or doing an apprenticeship. Apprenticeship you just go to the company and they send you to a special school where you learn what you need to learn to work for them in the job they want or they need. So I did an apprenticeship in programming, specifically in application development. But I was also studying IT management. So that's why my pay was relatively high for a student. Normal students, basically it's a paid scholarship, but also not really. It's a bit special. I don't think something like this exists outside of Germany, really. We are quite special about our apprenticeship stuff. Because you can also just do a normal apprenticeship without the studying part with university. Like a per person, normal builder in Germany, won't go to university or anything. They just, they just do an apprenticeship to learn their job. Apprenticeships uh, take like three years to complete. In uni, at least my uni, like the thing, my degree that I tried to get, uh, took three and a half years. But yeah. Normal apprenticeships in Germany. I think pay between 500 and like 800 bucks on average. Uh, how are we doing? Uh, I'm doing actually quite well, I would say. I slept well, I didn't sleep in too much. I actually wanted to maybe work out a bit before the stream. But I'm still very sore from my last workout. So I did the call to do it tomorrow in the morning. Uh, they don't do it here as well, I think. At least where I live in Bavaria. In Bavaria, it's a national holiday today. We think we talked about it already. Fisk. But uh, I got my own home gym. Got like a bench, some weights, and I also want to buy a bit more stuff eventually. Currently, I think, I j yeah, you just, you call it bobbles. I just have bobbles, up to 15 kilograms each, which is, you can already do a lot with bobbles. But I also want an, an extra long bar. So I can train chest a bit nicer and also do things like deadlifts and I don't know how you call it in English but in German it calls, it's called Rudern, it's rowing with the longer bar and some other things.
Yeah. I just want a bit more variation between the exercises that I that I can do at home. Dumbbells, single hand, barbell, bar. Okay. So I want a barbell. With that I can get a bit more variation in my workouts. Which would be nice. But personally I just prefer exercising at home. It saves a lot of time traveling. I also used to go to a gym when I was still living in my old place. But uh, ever since I moved I just live a bit too far away from it to easily access it. It would take me like 20 minutes with the bus each way and each bus ride cost me 2 euro so every time I want to go to the gym it would cost me 4 euro with the bus and sitting 40 minutes in there. Or I would have to drive with my car into the city which takes only like 10 minutes but finding a parking spot there would be hell. I like dumbbells for chest, but just want the option to use a barbell as well. Also back when I was still exercising more, the 15 kilogram dumbbells that I had were actually getting too light for chest. Way too light. I would have to do like 18 repetitions. Yeah, 50 kilograms for chest is not a lot. But you have to remember, I'm a stick. I sit the entire day on my ass, doing nothing at work. Afterwards, I sit the entire day on my ass, being on my computer, playing games, watching videos. So even getting to 15 kilograms in like six months of uh, working out, or even less. When I got the weights, it was probably end of February, and I got to the 15 kilograms two and a half months later, maybe. <laughs> but I had to do like 18 to 20 repetitions on the 15 kilograms for chest. Still fit good though. I actually like this mouse pad a lot. With the he 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 branding. I got the same one in dark as well, where the art on it is uh, in the light purple. Also looks really nice. I have to let my parents place whenever I play there. Uh, I can show you later if you want. Uh, this is actually part of a set. The he 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 branding is like uh, from a keycap set originally called Olivia. I have a keyboard with the same thing on it. I actually need to bulk. I tried at the beginning where I was working out a lot to see how low I can get my body fat. And I think I got my body fat down to like 15, 14%. But obviously that shouldn't be the goal for now for me. The goal for me should be at the moment to just build muscle, build weight. Because I'm generally underweight for my... Uh, size. Hi Peach, how are you doing? Yes. Well, I describe myself as skinny fat. Because I am skinny, but I still have a fat belly. Thanks to my GNA. 
into my lifestyle. Mainly lifestyle, let's be honest. Let's not blame it on something we can't we can't change. I'm doing quite well, I would say. Enjoying the day off in Germany, the holiday. Okay. Let's see how well this fits. I'm trying to go a bit lighter on the loop. But maybe we have to use the syringe later and go a bit harder. The thing is, I would like to drink more zero sugar stuff. Just to cut down on sugars in general. But my body cannot take the supplements the companies put in for the sugar. Like whatever they put in instead is completely destroying my body. bit annoying but it is what it is I don't even mind that the taste is different but now after knowing that my body cannot handle their uh, supplements for sugar I just associate that uh, taste with pain. <laughs> but like there's some zero sugar monster which is supposed to taste similar to Moscow Mule. So ginger basically. And I've tried it because I didn't actually notice that it was sugar free. I was feeling like shit afterwards, but it tastes good. I'm a sucker for ginger. As it tastes. Usually it tastes very refreshing. I like it. Uh, the white one. The Ultra, I mean, there's just lots of memes about that one, let's be honest. I don't think I ever tried it though. It got bigger the moment, or a while after I noticed I can't drink sugar-free drinks. And I don't actively go out of my way to drink things that will fuck me up. I don't think I ever tried sugar-free Red, Red Bull. But Red Bull in general is not my favorite my favorite anyway. Need to be a bit more careful when I do things. I actually have them a bit under the camera, at least a tiny bit. For stabilizers I usually like to have them closer to my face so I can better see what I'm doing. But then you guys can't see anything. I mean, this is already like watching paint dry, probably, but... To hell, Hungarian energy drink. Interesting. Sounds like you tried gasoline before this. How was it? I think I will have to use long pole stems for the stabilized keys. But I was maybe planning to do that anyway. We will have to try out some combinations. I have multiple switches we could put into the board today. I don't think I will try both. But maybe we can do like, since it's a split keyboard like this, we could do half half and see which we enjoy more. 
I already have like some sort of preference of switches. Like I like one of the switches more than the others that I have prepared for today. But depending on how they sound and feel inside the boards, that can change things. Since I don't know that yet, obviously. Like the board can change a lot how a switch feels and sounds. You never really know how it will play out until you write it out. If anybody has some sort of uh, song wishes, you can also let me know. I currently have the Nightbot uh, disabled, so you can't use the song request uh, command. I'm just listening through Spotify at the moment. Because I'm not feeling like listening to my normal playlist on Nightbots. And I don't want to delete or update it because the playlist itself is good. I'm just not feeling it like it right now. Okay. Let's touch up. I just there was a touch of plastic. But yeah, if you have any song wishes, feel free to just tell me and I can look for them on Spotify. Probably have to touch up the stabilizers inside the board. But that's fine. Stabilizers is also is always the most difficult part. Mm. And request ah, from him. Oh. Who's, who's pinging in Duff's Discord? Mm. I mean, you don't always have to be in the mood. Peach, I just said. It doesn't work. Because I got the bot disabled at the moment. I'm listening music through Spotify. Just let me know if you want to listen to something. And I can... Put it on on Spotify. I just want, didn't want to update my playlist on the Nightbot. Because I like that playlist. Just didn't feel like it today. Mm, don't worry. I should be able to find it. I'm just finishing up this stabilizer and then... I will put it in the playlist. Currently I'm just listening to some grandson. Always quite relaxing, at least for me. I don't think I've heard a lot of I will sleep when I'm dead. I have to put my arms in front of myself so far. It's 
visible what I'm doing. I mean, it's still not that visible, but... One day, I will have an actual camera, not my phone, for an overhead. So you can better see what actually I'm doing. But for now, that's a low priority. But I already upgraded my uh, phone holder to like an actual, actual camera arm of Amazon. And even put around the ring light. So you have a bit of uh, illumination. <laughs> Prior to that, I was putting my phone on a shelf which was above my my desk and just laid it on the edge of the desk uh, of the uh, shelf I mean it worked well but it's a bit scuff okay good job those as well. Can't wait to unbox the the keyboard and the keycaps. But I always firstly do the stabilizers. So we have those behind us. Okay. Let's see. Search. I will sleep when I am dead. And set it off. Set to queue. There you go. I've been lately doing a lot of step fixing for my other boards as well. But at least so often you need to redo them a bit when you use boards a lot. But you notice they don't really sound as nice as you thought they did back then. So you just go back to them and like completely rip them out and do them new. Or you play around with different switches, which could help making the stabilizer sound better. What I found out was that uh, longer post stems on switches, like the little cross thing on top of the switch is the pole. And below that thing is a stem that goes into the switch. And if that pole is longer, it means your switch will bottom out earlier. And it will uh, stop moving down earlier. And it feels like that actually makes steps a lot more forgiving for those switches. Because they don't move all the way down and hit the PCB of the keyboard. Maybe I'm just imagining that, but that's at least what it felt like to me when I was trying things out. 
I will probably do the same here. I will maybe try out other shorter pull switches as well. Like the switches are prepared for today. Uh two long pole. Well I prepared only one long pole for the entire board at least. Like a full set. One long pole and one short pole switch. But I have another set of different long pole switches which I could uh, quickly loop five for the uh, stabilizer keys. Like for backspace, enter, the two space bars and the other shift. Uh, I can quickly show you what I mean with them. Focus, yeah. You see the little plus size thingy on the top that presses into the into, your, into the housing. That's the stem. You can see in the bottom here that little knob in the middle. That's where the stem goes into. So if the stem is longer, it will hit the ground, the ground like the end of the switch earlier. So you have less of a travel up and down. Up and down, and you press down. So you don't press the stabilizer all the way down and all the way up all the time. And if it doesn't really hit the ground, it's just a lot more forgiving. Just a bit of a cheat code. Mm. Let's see. Maybe we can finish the last one with this tank of loop because. Pretty empty. <laughs> I have more, but this kind of loop is always a bit expensive, so try to lose every bit of it. I can also show you a bit of a close up of the last uh, wire. So you can see a bit better what exactly I'm doing here. A little comparison between both sides. Just gonna finish up this side and then I will show you a bit of a close up. This is the side I looped. You can see like there's just a little white coat around it. If you look at the other side, that's the side I didn't loop yet, this side. There is just the wire and the metal gear tape I put around it. And I put the metal gear tape around there to just reduce the amount of space the wire has inside of the plastic housing I put it into. It just reduces unwanted movement. You can also put the medical tape inside the housing. But that feels like, like I did it before. It works. But it's a lot more work. It's a lot more. F you, you work on a lot smaller scale. I'll show you in a bit. So it's a lot harder to really get that tape in there. And it also it doesn't stay there as, as good. Like if you move, move it a lot, if you use it a lot, it might come off. If you do it like this, it won't come off that easy. Have a great lunch. Just enjoy your time. Hello, Leafa. How are you doing? I saw around Christmas time your uh, Instagram stories. Were you like on holiday or is that just where you normally live? <laughs> My keyboard is fine. Don't judge it. Okay. Thanks Rika. 
I'm building today a similar one to this. <laughs> this kind of layout, like this one, is called Alice style. Alice just means it's a split ergonomic keyboard with arrow keys. Ah, okay. You just arrive at the beach. Pictures look really cool at the pool and so on. It was quite refreshing compared to the gloom, rainy weather we had in Germany at the time. And still do. Unfortunately. Okay. We are somewhat done, at least with the stabilizers. For example, this is stabilizer for one of your smaller keys. Come on, focus. Thank you. It just helps with the longer keys. Keys like backspace. You see those are longer. There's a switch in the middle and left and right gets pulled by the stabilizer. It is winter, but currently it doesn't really feel like winter. Let's say it like this. Currently it's 10 degrees outside. Plus. I don't know how much that is in Fahrenheit or whatever. I think like 45 Fahrenheit. If I had to guess. Like I know 32 Fahrenheit is 0 degrees Celsius. 30. But yeah, I can go outside without the jacket at the moment. With mm. just a hoodie. Which is a bit unfortunate for winter. We had a lot of snow here like three weeks ago, but now that's all gone. Okay. It is time to unbox the keyboard. Okay, you also use proper scale. Good, good. I didn't know that. Uh, let's put this one away for now. Oh god, that's heavy. Oh. I mean, the drunk keyboard is gone now, but I'm building a new one. Which is just as drunk. <laughs> God damn it, guys. <laughs> Okay. I really like the packaging of this. You can't really see it because of the light, but... That, that emote. Please. Oh, why did I put it there? Okay. I think this is the wrist rest. Yeah. They give you a wooden wrist rest, which is uh, formed to the same form as the keyboard. That's really cool. I like the dark oak. <laughs> I'm not putting my hands on anyone, <laughs> please. Did I put that emote here? Okay, lots of goodies. Where do we even start? Those are our gaskets, I think. For the mounting. More gaskets, but I think thicker. And our screws and hardware, I believe. I like the packages they give you here. These bags. Okay. This should be... Yeah. This is one of the plates. This is the... Uh, 
polycarbonate one. You see. Okay. Let's see what else we got. I've ordered this like one and a half years ago. So I really don't know what I got in here. Okay, this is the PCB. Very nicely packaged. And the daughter board as well. Okay. Don't even know where to put all this. Uh, what else? Foam. For the bottom, yeah. Each, I will just lose it. More foam. Okay. Probably all foam. Let's pull it out. Plate foam. More plate foam. I don't know why I have double foam. But okay. We put that to the side. We need that later. I think that's all from this one. Yeah. Okay. And now it's time for the big boy. like wrapped in like this nice fiber cloth let's see <laughs> I keep that part for myself I will not share it how I get bitches secret also best part about this board probably the backside for me backside is a big weight with a gold insert Also very heavy. Oh. Nice cloth though. Reminds me of my uh, Mr. Suit. My other very expensive keyboard. It also came wrapped in a cloth like this. I wouldn't engrave my shit rank. <laughs> but okay. Actually, at first, we would need our ECB. We don't actually need this now. Yeah, it's not the first time I've been falling. We should probably first check if the PCB works. I usually for always forget that. Oh no, that's not, a satisf that's not satisfying. I usually forget testing the PCB and just hope it works. You can see I did not test this beforehand. Just freshly ripped it open. I really hope it actually works. It would be tragic. Shouldn't lay it right on that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's the bright. Oh. Yeah, big surprise. They didn't send me a pipe bomb. Actually, a bit disappointing. Let's test if it works. Can't even see it because of that RGB. Oh, fucking hell. Might be easier to test like this. I just have to. Press those two. Yeah. 
I mean, colors don't, don't mean your switch work. Tap works. Caps lock. Like, that's the thing. Just because the LEDs work, doesn't mean the actual keyboard switches work. Testing hot swap sockets is really a pain. Testing normal Interesting, they have like a special hot swap socket for those on top. But yeah, testing hot swap is a lot harder. For no reason. I think the end stream button is an F key. But thanks for reminding me. Uh, I've done that before. Wouldn't be the first time. But uh, the end stream is an F key. This board doesn't have an F key. Uh, the function wrong. Okay, everything I tested so far works. Let's go for this one now. O, P, yeah. I, you, why? <laughs> it just comes back to me now what kind of emotes we added last time you were here, Peach. I remember that fever dream of a, of a stream. Thankfully, never had a dead mainboard. Uh, not mainboard, but where's the delete? Interesting. This one is delete here in the middle of the board. Interesting. But my other split board has a B. Like my other split board has two Bs on each side. Mm. Space. It only has one space. This one is a right alt. Interesting. Interesting layouts. Yep. Everything works. It seems that, in, at least in the current uh, layout, with the chip with. There's only a spacebar on the other side, and the other one is an alt. But I can easily reconfigure that, so it's not really an issue. Doesn't matter. But I'm just surprised that it came with that uh, default layout. What kind of emote is that, Peach? No, we cannot. No, we cannot. Who is those thirsty boys on my stream? Uh, I forgot my school level. Interesting that I only ordered it with the... Aren't they always? Or just today specifically? Screwdriver. 
I didn't check Illusion Chat today as much as the last few days. But I also woke up, ate, set up the stream and started the stream. But I didn't have a lot of time to really check for much. Classic is a mixed bag for me at the moment. I enjoy Shaman a lot. But my group, like you, you notice nearly every group is very burnt out of Nex. Even if they only have one character and do it once a week, they are burnt out. And it shows in most raids, unfortunately. Like yeah, you're burnt out, but then you also just make the experience worse for everybody else. And I really don't like when that happens. But I feel like you can't really evade it at the moment in Classic. But I still enjoy it. It's not a, the most enjoyable tier. I actually enjoy Nux the most from the free available rates at the moment. Like Nux is still fine. The rate is purely... For passing. It's not difficult, not long. You purely do Nux to push DPS. Let's be honest. That bit is too small. And that's fine. For me. Yeah, like you're done with Nux in like 15 minutes. And then the longest part is actually flying to the other two raids. But if most of your raiders are really demotivated, you might even struggle to fill with 25 people, and then the raid just becomes painful all the way through. Because if you are uh, not 25 people, you can't even pass a Nax Ramas, so there's the fun gone there. You will probably only drop bad loot because Nax Ramas loot table is uh, cringe. All the good loot drops from KT. So you have only three drops a week that are even relevant outside of the two trinkets that can drop from other bosses in Nyx Ramas. <sighs> so once your raid kind of starts falling off and people not enjoying it anymore, they can very easily with uh, two, three people. Uh, make it be worse for the entire raid. And that's what's happening in most groups, I think. At least I'm noticing it in at least two of my groups where I play. Uh... Yeah, normal goods exist. Quite a lot, actually. The biggest issue for me is... Like... I have a good guild for my... Enha. Like, I'm happy with the guild I am in. For my Enha. In memories. Very happy, actually. Last few weeks were... Mm, I wouldn't say disappointing, but worse. Because of the thing I described. People just getting burnt out of next. Performing worse, or just straight up don't come. Making it worse for everybody else. But I still enjoy playing there. Because even if the rates are bad, they are still decent. And I can still perform. But like, one of my warrior groups is just... Uh, parking at least 10 people each week. Only doing soft reserve runs. Not actually doing full good runs with loot council. 
always trying Prince Immortal. Which like, I generally don't mind going for achievements. But if we try it every single week and fail every single week for something different and stupid, just becomes so annoying. Especially because every time you go for a mortal, you can't really pass because you play ultra safe, like you're forced to play safe because you don't want to ruin it for everybody else in the raid. You don't want to be that person. Like accidents happen, but generally speaking, you don't want to be the guy that plays full risk in a raid where the goal is to be uh, to get immortal. But then every fight also the strats are ultra safe. So even if you play safe yourself, you could, in theory, if, even if you play safe, you could still pass, generally speaking. Not good, but decent. But if you go for Immortal, you also do certain bosses ultra safe or in a, like in a suboptimal way to just guarantee nobody dies. And that just completely ruins it for me. I don't like it. Uh, watch Bovarix right on his lock. Uh, I'm in the same guild as Bovarix mm. on another character. That's uh, also on a warrior. I enjoy playing there. Like I have uh, two warriors, two characters, two warriors. One in the guild I just described and one in the same guild as Bovarix. But then again, on that warrior, uh, I only recently got gear. So before that, I was just happy to be in clean, fast runs. So till now, I was just happy to be in the guild raid. Getting some gear that nobody else needs. But now the character is actually quite weird. And I feel like in the current, uh, I'm in their Monday split. And lately, they have a hard time filling that. But you can also, can't also pass there. Like generally the Monday split is for alts or mains that couldn't come for the other two splits. So generally the kill times will be slower. But then you might also have an idea where you only play with 20 people or with 22. And that again means you will not have good DPS that day. Uh, my warrior alt on Gehenna's is called Jeboosted. Just Jeb boosted. Don't have the best passes there yet. For the same things I explained. But my gear, ever, since last ID, my gear is pretty good. I should be able to get 99s now, slowly. Or like at least 90, above 95s everywhere. I'm still very behind other warriors in terms of gear, but I should be able to close the gap with knowledge quite a bit. Like I am item level average 213. 14 maybe and the highest warriors are like item level 217 219 like you won't be able to compete with those go uh, dk or paladin <laughs> I was already scared the last time I saw PvE Lords uh, Tonka. It scares me. The big Tauren warrior 
with the TBC PvP X. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, DK's uh, Naxxramas crazy, but Naxxramas ends in like two weeks. And they will get nerfed in Udo. At least that's the current knowledge. Uh, they are currently trying something out on the PTR. Where uh, DKs don't snapshot haste anymore on their gargoyle. They remove them. Gargoyle's haste is currently updating dynamically on the PTR. To uh, nerf their scaling. Because Blizzard noticed uh, that Guild started stacking DKs way too much. And it's being overrepresented in raids. And they don't like that. I still think DKs will perform well, very well. It will still probably be one of the top classes in Ulua. And also in TOC, and also in ICC. Like, I'm sure they still perform really good. They will just not be leagues beyond everything else. They will just be like top 3. I don't know if you would play two hand now. I'm not that big into DK min mix stuff. I mean, I, I I don't know if you go for two hand now. Maybe you still go for for one hands. Okay. I think DKs will go more into uh, attack power. Snapshotting because that's the snapshots. I like strength. But uh, not sure how they handle haste now. Like on Warmain, Gargoyle in Udua did how many casts? Like 27, 28, 29? I don't know. Total. And Unholy is still top with Warlocks. Like, it's still topping. Even with the worst casts on Warming. And I think DKs will have similar amounts of casts as DKs have on Warming. With the dynamic updating on Haste. So I don't feel like they will perform bad. Just because of it. They will perform worse. But I think they, they had to be something they needed to do. EK was just performing way too well with the way Gaga worked. Yeah, it's still good. It's not. It's just not as insane. Uh, Dual Weird is not only good because it can snapshot like magic now. Exactly. And even in ICC they are really good. They just fall off, at least on Warman, they fall off once the other classes get really geared. But it's not like DKs are there. Okay. Just a little test, I want to see how the step sounds with a long pause down. Well, if you want a tank, yeah, but some people don't want to be tank. Like, if I were a DK, I wouldn't want to tank. I would probably just reroll to Frost if I wouldn't enjoy Unholy. I probably would play Frost in general. Unholy sounds really shit to play. Not gonna lie. Go in. Please. Please. Like, I don't think I would play Unholy in, in Classic or in general. Just doesn't look that fun. 
In Classic especially not, because you just have to pray for all the procs to align. And then pray your group has fast enough kill times for it to matter. Just sounds like bad design. <laughs> Nothing else. Just gonna use the keycaps I'm gonna use anyway. As a little preview of what I'm doing, or what keycaps we are using. Or maybe I mean they don't tick, they just move a bit slow. But that also gets better when you use them. That's all right. Gets a lot better fast. Okay, and for the space bars. Sure, which goes where. I think the auto one goes on this side. I need to check later in the case which of those space bars it's where. Space bars work really well. Enter is still a bit slow. But it's getting there already. Big space is also good. Yep. And none of the... None of the... Steps are ticking. Okay, now we just need to get them off again. Always happy when stabilizers work on the first try. Because usually they don't. We will see. Yeah, those two are space bars. One here, one there, so for each farm. But you can also change them to anything else you want. But the layout itself is uh, an ergonomic split keyboard. Not really, your farm naturally rests right there. And same for here when you type. Mm. 
Can show you. I have another one. This one. Your hand just naturally rests like this. And you tie up your other hand also. It attempts for your hands to move a bit outside because usually your keyboard is like this when you type. But with uh, LS keyboards or Reso, like the split board, your hands can move a bit outside and also move a bit in. So you don't push your arms together when you try to type. So you can rest more naturally. That's why it is on a slight angle like this. <coughs> It's a, bit it's a bit special, but it's not that hard to get used to. I also have a lot of normal boards, so I always switch around a bit. But just purely for typing, those boards are probably the most relaxing. For gaming, they can be a bit awkward at times for certain things, for certain games. But usually, like for WoW, for example, it's completely fine. I have no problem swapping between the normal board and this. What no? Yeah. Time to put the switches into the plate. I kinda wanna try two different switches in this board. So I will do one half one switch, the other half the other switch, I believe. And then change the other half to the switch I like more. It's hot swap anyway, so it's fine either way. Okay. Question is. Do we want to use their standoffs or not? Or do we even give you? PCB and standoff? Torque set? What are those torque screws though? Those are the standoffs between PCB and plate, yeah. Lock plate and standoff. Rubber feet. Rubber feet are already put on, I think. But where do the torque screws go? Ah, okay, the back is with torque screws. Interesting.
Right. Not sure if I want to use the standoffs. It should make the installation a bit easier. I'm not sure, honestly. I have one here, one there, one there. I think those in the middle are fine. Those are fine. That's also fine. I don't know about this one. I don't know about this one. We can do maybe a couple of those. But not all. I think that's that's the game plan. So now let's see. What's the difference between those two? Gasket form and gasket form. Probably to unbox them. Gasket. 310, 310. No, it's the exact same. Small gas guts. I don't know where gasket installation is always is stressful for me. Like you put gaskets, like little foam things like this. They're squishy. You put them around the board and those get squished uh, by the case. So you don't screw the actual part with the switches into the keyboard. So you just uh, squish it like a sandwich in between the top and bottom half of the keyboard. which makes it usually a bit more even. You don't have many hard points then. Well, ideally you have no hard mounting points at all. Plus I know a couple of bigger brand gaming keyboards already Adopted this as well. Lots of different methods in the hobby. But this is probably the most popular one by now. Probably like the one the most where you have little gasket socks, that's what they call it. Usually made out of silicon or similar material. You just slide them over the tabs. That you just like a sock, you slide them over and they stay there. So you don't have to peel off the gaskets like I'm doing now and glue them on here. One by one, each side. I like gasket socks a bit more. I have two boards with them, I think. The white board I showed before also has gasket socks. Other oh, silicon. Take a while. 
It's worth it though. They make a big difference. We'll probably put the switches in first and then put the PCB below and push them in. I think that's probably the easiest with this kind of plate because the plate is very flexible. Lots of plates from uh, more mainstream keyboards from like bigger manufacturers like Razer, Corsair, Rocket or whatever have uh, steel, steel plates, so they're very rigid. Easiest to produce, especially mass produce, but for typing again, gives a very harsh bottom out, a bit more rough typing and uh, experience in using it. But it makes, a lot, makes it a lot easier to push switches in. Just because of the uh, rigidity of the material. And this is the opposite. This is very flexible, so when you put switches in, it can be difficult at times. But then again, we probably only build it once, most people. If even that. So it's. Not really a, a bad thing for me. And again, it makes the typing a lot more driver. Also affects the sound. It's not the end or be all. I also have some boards with aluminium plates, which sound very good. And also feel good. Certain boards and certain switches just go better with one or the other material. There's also plates out of uh, fiberglass. They are called FR4, the material. I also have a couple of those. Also really interesting material. It's usually a bit flexible. More than aluminium, but still gives a very different sound approach. What else is there? There's brass, very hard material. I used to have a brass plate in one of my keyboards, but I, I used to like it more when I started in the hobby, but by now. I'm not the biggest fan of brass. It gives a very... Hmm, how do I say it? First it's very hard material. And then the sound it uh, gives your board is also not something I like. It makes the board sound very shrill. Maybe the best word I can think of. It increases the pitch. like. If a switch is usually pitched quite low, brass can make it make the pitch go up of that particular switch. Like it brightens up the sound. It can be nice for something, but in the boards where I tried and heard it, it's not really something I liked. But of course, there's so many possibilities. Maybe in one board with one switch, I would like it. But so far, not so much. Favorite material is probably this polycarbonate, like here. And aluminium, just because aluminium is the most neutral. Like a good mix. Can't go wrong with that. FR4 is also nice though, but can be hit or miss. Especially because FR4 boards are 
usually not the most precise in cutting. So the fitment for switches sometimes is a bit weird. Like they could not, sometimes they don't fully click into the uh, plate. And if you have a hot spot block, like this one, or like most I own, and you remove a keycap or want to swap keycaps or whatever, you sometimes pull out the switch with them. Not the end of the world, but if the switch is not that securely mounted, it can also just uh, make weird noises or feel, feel off when you press it. So you shouldn't go too cheap on there. I think there's also plates made of carbon fiber, but I never tried those. But I would imagine they sound similar to fiberglass. Nicest thing though is brass looks really good. Like the golden shimmer can look really good in some builds. I know like four years ago brass was very popular. I know it's not as popular anymore. But when I started out it was very popular. So let's get done. Let's put some of the switches in. And then we go and install the standards and everything. Oh no, not this, oh, this, later. Okay, so I wanna use those or those. Those are Gesu Bobas for T's, and those are Oil Kings. Both are already looped. Both really, really nice switches. I like the feeling a bit more of those, at least uh, when I tried them. Those are also really nice, but I don't know. Like those are long pole switches. And I'm not always the be the biggest fan of long pole switches. And the feeling when you press down on those is just a lot softer. And those are a bit harsher. This is not, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but we have to see. Maybe something you could see in the camera. When I press this one down, it doesn't go fully into the housing. That's due to the long stem. And I press this one down, it goes fully in. You see? It's like the biggest difference between the two. And that little bit of uh, shorter movement can have a big effect in tiny switch like this. But I would say we just uh, do one half with one, one half with the other. And just see which side we enjoy more. From the sound and also from the feeling. That's at least my best guess what to do. Because I don't want to put both switches on the entire board and try that way. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> so if we can reduce a bit of the workload, I'm not opposed to that. Oh, it's one of the tighter polycarbonate plates. Oh. I also need to be sure that most of my pins are straight. This one... Interesting. Right, maybe you can see that. You see the two, the two pins here? One of them is like turned. Like not bent, it just... Actually turns into a di different direction. Let's see if I can...
<laughs> Should be alright, I think. But yeah, usually you mm. would screw with the standoff this this plate onto the PCB and then just uh, push all the switches in. But since this plate is like this, it's usually better to put the switches in first and then just sandwich them both together. Just gotta be careful that uh, all of those pins, like each switch has two pins that you saw, which connected to the to the board. And those can be bent when you put the switch in. Like when you put the switch into the PCB. And then it doesn't make contact. And it won't work. You can still just uh, remove the switch, bend it back. And it's usually fine. But if you get unlucky, that bent pin, they actually press against the hot swap socket and break it. Literally break off the solder the solder joint and uh, break it off. So I, then I would have to solder it back on. Thankfully I would ne I never had to do that. But uh, eventually there will be a first time for that I think. <laughs> don't think that's the hardest in the world, soldering that back on. I'm not the most experienced with uh, soldering. But I soldered a couple of boards already. Just never as hot swap socket. But it shouldn't be that much different. To be honest. Maybe do you know what I'm talking about. All those black plastic bits, like this one here, right above my finger. That's a hot swap soccer. It has a solder joint here and on the other side. And you could quite literally push them out if you uh, are not careful. If you get unlucky. Or if um, the factory where those things got soldered uh, maybe didn't have the best quality control because you never know. Maybe the solder joint was already not that good. When you press against it, in a weird way, it could break. I heard it more from others than actually experiencing it, experiencing it myself. And I'm hoping to keep it that way. I fully clicked in. No. It's just very awkward. Nice. Tolerances can be quite tight at times. I will probably leave out those because those can wiggle around and then doing that push in strat that I'm going for won't work out as well. And I'm probably going for full. Uh, Long pole stems, either those or I have another pack with different ones for the uh, stabilized keys for the shift enter backspace backspace and so on. But I will probably experiment a bit today with both if I have the time but or more like motivation. Maybe I will love it on the first try. But I sometimes just, uh, when I'm bored, pick up one of my boards and just play around with different switches for the modifier keys. Oh, this one can also move. Not good, but maybe I can deal with that. Okay. 
and the other side we try the other ones. I actually have way too many switches. I was recently thinking about all the other switches that I have in my drawer behind me. And I noticed I still have multiple switches and sets basically, which I want to use somewhere. But I'm also quite happy with how most of my boards are at the moment. If you can't see it, but to my left is a or two desks with I think ten keyboards or like nine, and they all sound good. I enjoy the way they feel. I enjoy the way they sound. I wouldn't want to swap switches around at the moment, but they still have switches that I want to use. So I need to find keyboards where I think they would sound good in, which is hard because you never really know how a switch will sound inside the keyboard. Like I still have alpacas. They used to be really hyped up. Like uh, two years ago? Three years ago? It was probably one of the hottest switches back then. And I really like their uh, color scheme as well. Like a grayish housing with a pink stem. Looks really nice. They also sound really good. But I never really got around to use them anywhere. I still have uh, snow white switches. Which I need to break in because they have a special material they are made out of. Which you need to break in a bit. Breaking basically means you have to use it for a while for the material to rub off with the friction. And they have dark jades, those are tactiles. Like all the switches you see here are linears, meaning when you press them down, that's just one, one movement down, nothing happens there. But on tactiles, when you press down one of the keys, you have a little bump in the middle of the press. Whenever the key activates, there's a bump. I usually don't like tactiles too much. I prefer linears from most times. Just because of the sound and the feeling. But I like to have some var var variety inside my collection. They still have those dark jades. Those are very tactile. Like there's different amount of bump you can have. Different strength basically. Some are weaker, softer than others. Those dark jades are very strong tactiles. Like they really hit you with that. <laughs> and you press them down. The other board, I have one tactile board in my entire collection and it has like some still strong tactiles but they are compared to the ones I still have in my drawer they are quite weak. But they are on the medium scale. They are tactile, pretty good tactile but not like one of the heavy hitters. And then I have another set of tactiles. They they are called Oreo Oreos for some reason. They are also a bit more on the medium side, but they also I heard good things about them, so I want to try them out. But I I don't really know where and which build. Probably have to do a bit more budget oriented builds. Because I can't build a keyboard like this every month. It would be way too expensive. Even if I would like to. I 
Okay. Let's install some of the standoff. Like on the sides here, here. I don't know, not here, here, there. I want to keep standoffs away from where I actually type. You have some more flexibility in those areas. Are they all the same? Or have there two packets in there? That you would put focus. Yeah. You put those little standoffs in between the plate. The plate is this, which I filled with switches. And the PCB to give it a bit more rigidity. But usually in the keyboard, you don't want it to be too rigid. Too much rigidity is usually not that enjoyable to type on. Well, depending on on what you like and what kind of switches you're using. But for linears, for example, that I use, at least for me, it's a lot more enjoyable if it's a bit more flexible. Okay, we need one, two, three, four, five. Six. I could also build it complete, completely without them, but I feel like if I want to swap around switches, it would be helpful to have them, at least some of them installed. And like a stand of here will not really affect what happens here. Like it will a tiny bit, but not enough for me to care, I think. Then again, it's not that hard to remove them again. I don't mind. If I notice later down the line that I would want to like to use, use it without them, I can. One of the other boards I built a while ago, also on stream. I also first enjoyed the standoffs and I think a couple of months ago I removed them again. Uh, I think we need those. Lock plate and standoff, yeah. They're so tiny. <laughs> I don't even really see it in the packaging to remove them. My heart is racing, I'm chasing. Look how tiny they are. My past is catching up to me, right through me. Poison, coursing, I'm dying. Okay, I think I would like to use phone, at least some. Hmm. Or do we use platform? We have the option to Come on. We have an option to use this. That's a thick foam sheet, which helps a bit with sound. Sometimes they help, sometimes they don't do the thing you would like them to do. Like it affects the sound as well. Usually in a good way, but not always. But I guess, I guess we can give it a shot like this. It's usually a good starting point to just try the foam. Because most of the time it will improve the sound. Oh god, oh god, that will be a pain to screw in. I already know it. Please. 
Jeez. Not going into. Let's see. It says. Cup, Phillips head, lock plate and standoff. Or do they even fit? I'm not doing any weird mistakes. Yeah, they do. Okay. But at least it's the right screw. Let us actually do it afterwards. Let's see if we can somehow thread the needle here. Probably hard enough as it is. I think they are too short actually. Are they longer ones? I think those are for the bottom part, and those are for the top. Let's see. That's what I get for not looking at any instructions. Should be better now. Aye, a lot better. Okay. And on the bottom should also be alright. Even be big brain. But actually, be easier to just put the screw there. Let's screw this on first. I know you can't really see a lot, but it's very fidgety. If it makes you feel any better, I don't see a lot either. Anybody has any questions, by the way? Feel free to ask. Since not everybody is completely immersing themselves into the more custom side of keyboards. Some things might look a bit weird what I'm doing. Looking is also fine though.
Interesting. The foam not fully cut out here. The other one also like that. That out, mm. or just cut. Maybe I can just push it through, actually. Be all right. And now comes the bit awkward part where I just squish them together somehow. I'll just go through most switches and just try to press them in. So they are fully socketed into the hot swap sockets. This side is really loose. And also try to push from both sides, like I support the socket from behind, so I don't accidentally push one out. At least I try to support them a bit. I think this looks alright. We will test it as well in a bit. They are all in. But for now, let's screw in the uh, the standards from the top. It should also help a tiny bit.
already coming together quite nicely. Confidence. When I started using nail polish, I was definitely a bit more scared. What people might think, but by now, doesn't really bother me anymore. And it being chipped away, this also looks some people go for. I don't really care about it. Yeah. Like, them being chipped away can also be a good look. Maybe not as much as they are at the moment, but still a good look. Where we are at it. Let's quickly check. Uh, Let's check if they they all work. I didn't bend any pins. Surprised. <laughs> hey. Then it's time to put the last few bigger keys in. And then we put it into the board. Put keycaps on and then test both sides how we like them. We still need to decide for a winner. Probably should have tested it after I finished putting in the other keys. Over. More here. And three more from the others. But then again, sin, it's probably something different if I were to do it in Macedonia or Serbia than doing it in Germany with the nails. That's definitely true.
quick sanity test. Definitely check, need to check the shortcuts to disable the RGB. What does that even mean? This is also space? This is space? Hmm? This has a weird layout. I definitely need to change the layout. Okay. Everything works. Ah, it's a scan. Good boy. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect people in Serbia or in general in Eastern Europe to do it too much. But they also exist. Just a nice way to express yourself. This is ready to be put into the case. Let's see if we can do it with ours. Yep. I wouldn't say you can see them on the streets everywhere in Germany either, but it's definitely more popular. Oh. Be more careful. Looking on Discord. <laughs> Somebody called a doctor. I think I'm seeing double on my shoulder. Is a monster. Think that I'm in trouble. Nobody got medicine. No one got a cure. So I'll keep on running till I know what for. Oh shit, I take a drag. And I like torque screws for cases, I don't know why. I like the look. Even though you don't ever really see them. Okay. Are they just that long or did the other ones just go? Yeah. I was really sure I was completely screwing them out. It seems like uh, the factory they came out of put them in really tight. Looks a bit like they are already pulling threads. This one of them. Push this one out. Why is this so short? This side. Pretty sure it's completely re without. Yeah, it is. Why is it so short? Did the screw break? Oh. But why is it shorter than the rest? Well, let's put this a bit separately. We put it into the same corner again, just in case. <sighs> oh, 
not feeling that one. I think usually there's some sort of groove. I think for now we will try to do without foam. Because I have foam for this spot as well to fill in the space. We try without and then later try with. But for now we try it like this. And directly afterwards with the foam. Which of the screws go in there? Those? Probably. those bags okay. remove this cable always nice when keyboards come with daughter boards so you can reduce the chance to have uh, electrical issues on the line Usually the daughter board makes it harder to open up the keyboard because of the cable. When everything is plugged in together, it can sometimes be really tight to move around and unplug things. Most of those connectors are sometimes a big pain to plug, plug in without bending anything inside. I have another with one of those a couple but the last one i used and built on stream i actually bent the pen inside that connector and had to unbend it that was very stressful because i didn't have another one of this wrong thing how do i ideally place this because this doesn't bend well okay probably like this now we squish it between the top and bottom half the rounds. Top one was this corner. Now we just screw it down the cross pattern. I don't even know how much space is uh, actually in the bottom half. For the uh, foam they give you with the board. Because I like. I have another sheet of foam. It's not very thick. Which you would put in the bottom half if you would want to. But I want to give it a try first without. Too much foam is also not good at times. It can 
Mute the bot more than you would want. It's nothing is not right. I didn't really look, but that definitely. Is... <laughs> Pretty sure. The USB port might be upside down, something weird. I think I noticed it early enough, so nothing is bent. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go in like this.
nothing to lose I think my breakdown is long overdue Tell the doctor I'm ready for Yep That's it But now I need to go from this angle to this one. Plug into it. I guess not the worst, but unplugging it now would be it will be a bit of a pain. Second attempt. I didn't really for now. Let's go too hard on one side. Tight. Then we can finally put on the keycaps. Waiting for that for a long time. Definitely got a lot heavier. So you know, I'm planning to use this keycap set. Yeah. By putting them on, I can look on the other side with the specialties. Maybe we can find something else good here. There's a second B. Those are the, some of the extra keys. I'm thinking about escape. There's another escape key. Don't think there is. Well, there is. But it doesn't say escape. Just the same key in black. We can play around with that. Oh no, let's see how oh, this will look.
probably the most satisfying part. Just putting in, putting on the keycaps. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I could also make this key something else. But I think with these. Uh, but I could also get this key as an uh, delete. Currently, I think it's considered as a delete for the system. I don't know if I want the keycap to say that if that makes sense. I 
think so, yeah. Only one of you? There's some different Not quite. Page up. And what would you consider as a special key for home? Probably this one. supposed to fix
Now we need to see which of the space was fit. Because I'm clueless. I think one of those two. Smaller one probably here. Like and the bigger one is probably even big enough. No, maybe the bigger one. Too much. Perfect. Okay. Guess it's time for at least a tiny sound test so we can compare the two different switches that we are using. Let's see. What do we do? should be able to hear the keyboard now, at least a tiny bit. one half of the one switch.
I think I have a favorite already. I think I'm preferring this side over this one. Just because this side is a bit more higher pitched. Doesn't suit this board as much, I think, the higher pitch compared to this. But let's open it up again, put the foam in, in the bottom half, and then see if that changes anything. That's what I would like to try. And then go with the final config for the switches. I think that's a good call. But overall, sounds really nice. I think. <clears throat> it has a really clean, clean sound. It's not overly marbly compared to some of the other new boards that got released in the past year. And it's quite classic compared to those. I can, once we are done here with this one, shouldn't take more than like another 20 minutes or so. Hopefully, I can also compare it to some of my other boards that I have. I wanted to do that anyway for a while. To just have all of my current keyboards being compared to each other. In the typing test at the end because when I I will download this VOD from Twitch and uh, I've been thinking if I do the entire comparison at the end between all I'll probably segment that and make it as a different separate upload just so whoever's maybe interested, and even for myself, to have a bit easier access to a decent comparison between the two. If anybody was listening to the prior comparison, can you tell me what the sound was? Was it fine? Like just your quality talking. Were you able to hear them well? Was there any weird sounds, noises, or whatnot? Because uh, I've just copied over what I did in my old apartment, which is a second audio line, which just is very boosted in noise. So you can actually hear it. And also has a different like uh, threshold when it opens up. Okay. So it was probably fine. You can see this foam is a lot thinner than the other one we used before. It also has a lot of cutouts for the uh, hot swap sockets because they stick out. I think we can probably just. And we should only have a unplugging anything. It's like a glove. And now we just and I think the cable wants to be rooted differently. Probably for here. 
like even then that wouldn't make any difference. Not like of a soft yeah, cable thing. Definitely doesn't feel like I spend a lot of thought on how you could route your cable in this case. It's a bit sad because the rest of the case is really nice. But there's definitely not a lot of, en enough thoughts about the connection cable. We could have done them a lot better. Like a little groove on the bottom of the case where the cable goes into. That's what most manufacturers do, reduce that kind of cable. Let's see if anything changed.
I'm not a fan. Don't think I am. I think I much prefer without the foam and the sand. So we remove the foam, change the side, and then we can finally do a sand test. Thankfully this board is quite easy to open up. I have a couple of boards where it's definitely a lot harder to get in and out. Okay, I have to turn on the lights in my room. It's probably getting quite dark outside. Be nice schools. Quite interesting. The switches which I preferred outside of the board I'm not the biggest fan of inside the board. Didn't really expect that. To guess you Bobas it is. No oil kings for this board. But I will really find a new home for the old kings as well. No phone was definitely more enjoyable. best to go row by row so the other switches stay in and support when I put in new ones I refuse. Oh, 
Hello, Philippi. How are you doing? I think this song is 20 years old. I mean, not this version of the song, I'm not sure if it's a cover. Is it a cover? I'm really a bit clueless when it comes to rap music. Why is my phone dying? Hello? Oh my Hmm. Yeah. Uh, my phone just died. I plugged it in, but it seems it did not load in the meantime. Oh, it load was loading too slow. Uh, it's been three hours, not four. It's been three hours. Yep. I have done a longer one already. I remember doing like a five hour one on one day and the next day another like four or five hours. I know the camera is gone. The thing is, uh, I'm filming this with my phone, the top view, and my phone turned off. <laughs> I have a cable running to it to so charge it, but it seems that it wasn't charging or not charging enough by filming. Give it like a minute or two, I will try to turn it on again. Yeah, the battery is gone. But I remember, like I was filming beforehand, and I know my phone can charge more when it uh, needs to fill. That's the thing. Oh, 
So probably the settings went right in the USB. And when you plug in your phone to the computer, you can say just charging or whatever. Probably it didn't go into charging mode or something. I will check in shortly. I will plug it into a power bank. Got one next to me. I will quickly go to the toilet and then we can see if my phone charged in the meantime. I'm sorry. Let's see. Turn him back on. Let's go. Ah, the misery. Phone turned off.
I don't know, it's telling me some apps are getting optimized. Sounds like it maybe was auto updating itself. I don't know. We can also make an ASMR stream. As long as I don't have to hear it, I don't care. my phone faster than it can drain my battery. We might need to change the the haw emote to a cat without the Christmas hat. But okay. Now you can see Finally. The dirty ASMR is available on my OnlyFans, thank you. For only 20 bucks a month, you can get access. Team viewers can get 10% off. With the limited call Jabusi. But only for this weekend. you mean generally when you talk about red blue and uh, browns you talk about cherry switches from the manufacturer cherry no none of the switches you see are from cherry they usually have their own naming you can also generalize it into saying red switches or linears the most you could say you could you could call most linear switches red or most tactiles brown or the clicky ones blue but it goes a lot deeper than that if you really get into it the switches i'm using here the those autofocus I need to see the double again. Uh, those pink switch I'm putting in right now are called Gezu Boba 40. And the black switches here are called Oye Kings. I didn't come up with those names, just the companies that made them 
both of them. Cherry, the manufacturer that also produces certain switches, just coats their uh, switches by their color. But nearly no one else does. And Cherry is not the only manufacturer of switches. We are just the most mainstream one. I know. Contemplating all the places I escaped to gotta face it. I'm erasing faces from my brain just to replace it. Cause I got so much pain in here that only I've created. Man, and I just don't know both of the switches here are linears. So the same or not the same, but similar to Cherry Reds. I'm starting wars with the help that I've been looking for, so I don't have to swim ashore and ruin who I've guaranteed. I think I'll stop breathing. Those keycaps look really nice. I really like them. Welcome back, Koito. How are you doing? Weren't you back already yesterday? Or did I just imagine your voice? Okay, so I just imagined your voice. Interesting. The voices. How was your vacation? Yep, it's uh, QWERTY. Nearly all custom keyboards are QWERTY. Because that's just the market with the most people that buy things. That makes sense for you. It's the biggest market you want. So that's what most people produce. And I don't really care if I use QWERTY or words. Makes no difference for me. Yeah, I heard you drove uh, quite a while to get to your family. Fourteen hour drive. How many kilometers is that? Like one thousand? Yeah. 
shouldn't be. Uh, I've been doing alright. I had some health issues in December, but it got better halfway through. And now I can't really complain much. Yeah, it, it comes and goes. Alright. Got some medicine. Which eventually helped. And on Monday, I have to call my doc again. And they uh, can tell me what their tests uh, said. Okay. Actually. Um, can you hear me? Cause I have been alone by myself. Damn, that sucks. For head gasket is really <laughs> the worst thing you could have. Like it's at least not a total failure, but there will probably be a lot of coolant and whatnot in your oil, yeah. You probably have to either say rebuild it if you want to keep it or have to buy a new one and get rid of it fast before it blows up. Or like, there's bigger issues where people are noticing, not buying it off of you. <sighs> okay, just do it yourself. Well then, lucky. But also clean it, Philippi. I really like how this turned out. It's really dark for you though. Let's see if I can... This is better. Can you hear me? Looks really nice. Let me see if I can get the autofocus to work. side you can see like the little chamber here which goes there it's a heavy boy i hate clicky switches Right, right off into a ditch. <laughs> okay. You did that on purpose, didn't you, Peach? Waiting after I drank. <sighs> okay. Let's see if we can get some. Typing sounds. First, though, I need to change the layout, I believe. Is there a Windows key on this? This is a Windows key. Yeah. Quickly opening the software to reprogram it. Like, why, why is this not a spacebar? It makes no sense. This should be. Oh, this, this should be Alt. This should be Windows. 
Goes to space bar for space. Can I? Yeah. So you can see what I'm doing. Space. This should be windows. It is shiny, yes, but I will probably disable the RGB. I am not the biggest fan of RGB in keyboards where I try to keep it down a bit. Uh, is even a Windows key inside of this? Is it somewhere else? Let's be here then. Left win, yeah. And this should be left alt. That's control. Right alt. I don't care. This should also be space. I don't need a right alt or control, so I don't care what this is. This should also be a B. And the home will be a delete. Nothing changes, pack it up and just drive away. Sick and tired this of should this be a delete. Day hide away. This every day hide away. Okay. And now for the layers. How do I even get to the layers? I don't. So this should be a function key then. Marco. Yes. Uh, like this, I think. We will see. Uh, layer RGB toggles on Q. Okay. Let's see if I press this and this. We didn't see that, but it. Turns off. So if we test our keys now, those two are Bs, that's a delete, that's doing nothing because it's a function, those two are spacebars, left out, windows, control. Okay. Remember I was on vacation, I've been trying to get bottom. Ah, yeah. I don't think you are, but you might have to go different, I don't know, just talk with them. Okay. Just to show it. I can turn off the RGB now. I will probably keep it off. Ah yeah, by the way. It's to the board. Because mine doesn't. Even though I like the grippy texture of mine a bit more. And I like when they are a bit more further away. Yay. Let's see, we want to go to... This. Setting up my typing test stuff. So you can listen to the keyboard a bit. I will probably... So this one, when compared to the other split keyboard I have, and then compared to the rest of my keyboards, so we have like, I have a comprehensive comparison between all I have, which I can listen to later and reference. Yeah, like mandalas. I didn't specifically buy this one because it has one on the back, but it's a nice coincidence. Okay, let's see, I need to deactivate my camera, go to this, activate this one, 
Aha. Okay. Let me know if the sound is a bit weird or whatever. Okay, setting up my mic. typing with here so probably need to adjust a bit. I'm not a fast typer per se, so be nice to me. Space pause really heavy. Okay. Excuse the loud sounds. Wait, I didn't. How will I rate it? It's a lot more pleasant to type, but it takes a while to get used to, even though I'm not that used to. to a cheaper split board that I own.
Yeah, I mean, it's a full plastic board, so... So it will be a bit more higher pitched. Let me just go through my entire thing and we can listen to them all together. But the new one we built, really fucking good. Uh, I will mute the uh, uh, mic a bit because it's very sensitive. different in typing. This is my first full custom keyword I built. The switches are very overlooked, so it, I will probably suck at typing now because it feels way, way, way different. Also because I'm used to split board now. So let's see. This one is not very modified yet. I just fixed the stabilizers and did a bit to the case. But the switches are, I think, only factory looped and not very well. So this one still needs a bit of love. But I still like how it looks. I like how the steps feel. So it's still a decent board. And the keycaps are a different profile. <sighs>
it's still nice. I'm trying to get from the cheaper to the more expensive ones at the moment, by the way. Yeah, I also like how the space bar from the last one sounded. It's very nice. Uh, with this one, you probably won't hear a lot because this is my keyboard with silent switches. Uh, I don't think it does. This is my tattoo. Uh, I mean, maybe a bit here, but not really. Okay, silent keyboard, so we probably need to increase the volume of the stream a bit. Actually, really, I love typing on this one. I don't know why, but the silent switches does just feel a tiny bit bouncy, but the keyboard here itself is quite harsh. Like this board is uh, a top plate, so it's completely rigid, but with the bouncy switches, it's really cool. I love it. I also stream building this one if anybody's interested in it's on my uh, backup YouTube. Okay, going up in price now. Also, this is my one and only tactile keyboard. All the other ones are... This is not AliExpress, what do you mean? This is a GMMK Pro from Glorious. My AliExpress board, oh yeah. This is my AliExpress board. I forgot that one. We do this one after this. <laughs> it's right next to me, that's why I forgot about it. Uh, this is my only tactile keyboard, so it will sound rougher. And we can count at the end if you want to. This will sound a bit louder. This keyboard in general is quite loud, so keep that in mind. And also tactile switches, so typing might feel a bit weird.
has its charm. I like this baseball. Okay, let's take the LH plus bolt next. This one is quite simple. It's a Gamma K from AliExpress with also AliExpress keycap. I think it looks nice. You will see it will go full rainbow. And I, the only thing I did to this was pour silicone into the bottom so it has a bit more weight and heft. The function of the wheel is to manage uh, sound. You can increase or decrease sound and or mute it. This board has a bit more heavy linear switches, but I think it sounds all right. I didn't do much with it. I just fixed the steps. It's alright. It's a board I mainly use because of the uh, cableless function whenever I need to be on my TV or anything. And it's also my cheapest board. This is probably 80 bucks. The other ones are a lot more expensive. So it's nothing special. Yeah, yeah the different keys are louder because of the plastic case and everything. But okay, let's move through the other cases. I don't have any clicky keyboard, no. Okay, this is the Illusion Special Keyboard, as you can see. with the logo and everything. Okay, let's see. Swapping between so many keyboards is not easy because each and every one of them feels very different.
yes, this is a keyboard with long pole stands the same as we put into the other keyboard, the new one. Like not same switch, but also long pole. So they uh, bought them out earlier. really like this one, by the way. I really like this one. Okay. Let's move up even more expensive. Yep. So build this one on stream. This is a Scarlet TKL. As far as I remember, this board sounds very raw. There's no foam in it. The switches are just pre-looped, and the steps are done by me. So it's again a bit louder, a bit more clacky. Not as much fog, just as a heads up. Okay, let's see. What's happening? the keyboard a bit. Let's try this again. Very clanky. It's also very heavy to type on. It's a bit harder to get used to. Okay. This one still needs a lot of work, in my opinion. It's my first uh, full scene seat 
very premium board that I bought like five years ago. So the stabilizers all sound pretty bad. I already uh, feel bad for you to, that you have to listen to them, but it's part of the collection and one day I will make a stream fixing it. But it's a soldered board, so I need to desolder, which takes a lot of time. And I want to upgrade my equipment before I desolder one more board. Just so you know. Space was really bad. But the general sound of it is very poppy, I think. The space bus just killing it, unfortunately. biggest and heaviest board. I also stream building this one if anybody's interested. It's called Mr. Suit. Also has a huge weight in the back. And it sounds very marbly, very poppy. I don't really know how to explain it differently, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, this one probably weighs over three kilograms. my most expensive biggest board. I really love how it sounds but sometimes you get a bit tired of that kind of sound so I swap around a lot. And for the end I would say we go for last time with the new one and then we finish it off. I think it sounds good. It's 
also really heavy to be honest. Like this one has a lot more weight than you would think. Okay, let's see if we can get used to the split board again from the prior ones. If we fail it out now. I plugged it. Mio. Get back into the normal scene again. Okay. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I definitely did. It was a great stream, I believe. Four and a half hours is also quite long. But I'm very happy how it went. I'm very happy how the keyboard ended up. And I'm happy I was able to do a big comparison between all the boards I have. I'm not sure when I will be able to do one of those streams here again. I will probably, I, I really want to do it, but I need to see if anything on the market will catch my eye and will be affordable enough for me to just buy it, buy it. Because, I mean, we can be transparent enough for this. I'm not actually sure how expensive this keyboard was. I think when I ordered it, it was probably around 399 or something. I'm really not sure. But that's just the case. That's the thing. Broken Maya V2. Bonus. Because it's not available anymore. That's the thing with those keyboards. They are only they are only available for a limited period of time. Maybe a restock? Okay. It seems so. The base price was 360. 360. Dollars. So with import, I probably paid around 400 just for the case. The keycaps are 100 or close to 100 with import costs and the switches are, I don't know, 50 to 60 at least. So this board in total was probably like 550, close to 600, just to put it into perspective. 
the next coming builds will probably be something a bit more budget oriented. Maybe a bit more oriented on the modding side of things and not as much on the building side of things. That could also be interesting. Yeah, I like the wood. I think that was also an extra, but I'm not sure anymore. But I'm very happy I got it. Really, really nice. It was pretty spontaneous when I bought this thing. I remember that. But I don't regret it. Yeah. I will see if I can find something a bit more budget oriented. More on the 100 to 200 euro range. Total. Total. Important. And I could see what I can do with the coming months. But I'm happy so many people joined in. Usually, I don't think my keyboard streams <laughs> get that many consistent viewers, actually. Paper me 30,000 euro. Hmm, surely. I will just take credit from the bank and do it. <laughs> Very happy that so many people tuned in today. And they're interested to the keyboard scene. I hope I gave people maybe some ideas. I got them a bit more into the hobby. But I think I will relax a bit now. Clean up my room. Because the packaging is all, all over the place. And I will, will be back streaming actually in two hours. <laughs> but uh, I will be streaming World of Warcraft. From 8 p.m. Central European time to midnight, probably, or close to midnight. If anybody wants to join in there, feel free to do so. But I will try to catch a break now. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.